How can I play a record with my finger? How can you shrink your arm? How can you avoid going to hell in China? be extremely fair and win some money at the same time. You! Fair! Impossible! You always cheat, Fred Dinage, you know that. A little hurtful, a little <laughs> wounding. Do you want to play? Yes. yes. Right, I'll need six coins in front of you, yeah. shaped like that, so you've got four going down, if you like, yeah. and three going across. OK? Yeah. 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 Now, the how is, how can you move just one coin so that you've got the same number of coins going down, as you have going across, and all the coins must be touching. Um, One move, and they yeah, must that, all still um, be touching. There, there, put it there. Yeah, three down, three across, two across as well. <laughs> Never mind, top it, good try. I've got it, I've got it, I know this one. Go on. What you do is you get a hacksaw and you cut that one in half, you see, yeah. and then you put that half over there so that then you still have half yeah, there. Very good, side. Carol, very good That's indeed. Right. This is how you do it. You take the top coin from there, put it on the axis there, so if you like, you've got Four going down, four going across, and they're all still touching. But that's, that's not fair. That's how you can be extremely fair and make some money at the same time. Next. Cheat dinage. Now for a rather marvellous how. <laughs> how can I play a record with my finger? Here we have a record oh, player. Can't. Switch it on one finger and... That's brilliant. Wait a minute. What are you doing with your Yeah, voice? the music's coming from somewhere else. <laughs> I'm cheating, actually. <laughs> and you, you're, you I was cheating. Cheat. All right, I was cheating. However, this does not mean that the how is impossible. All you have to do is study a record and a record player in a little more detail. Now, here we have the record. Now, this is the storer of information, mm. all right? Then we have a needle. Place that. That is reading the information stored on the record. And uh, this horn is the amplifier, amplifying the vibrations yeah, yeah, running yeah. through the needle. Yeah, yeah, but what, what about, about the finger? finger? What about my finger? Oh, right, OK. Here we have exactly the same setup. Here we have this red bit of plastic, which in fact is my record, the amplifier, which is a balloon, and my nail, which is the needle. It and this work. is, it will work. Watch this. This is going to say, Congratulations. 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 How's it doing it? How's it doing it? Well, on this bit of red plastic, there are lots of lumps and bumps, just as in the groove on a record. And my needle, my nail, is reading this. It's causing vibrations. Those vibrations are being passed onto the amplifier, and that is the sound that you can hear. And it's the arrangement of these lumps and bumps which causes different sounds. Mm -hmm. Now, you don't need a bit of plastic to have a record or a sound, because over here I have been working on an array of railings. Listen to this. Oh, right. that's marvellous. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. A little monotone, you might think. Mm, Look at tuneless. this. Symphony here of railings. It's splendid. This is going to play for us the William Tell Overture, otherwise known as the Lone Ranger tune, or to you, the one that goes. Tune up the needle, tune up the railings. Are we ready? Let's go. Thank you. Oh, very good. Thank you so much. And that is how you can play some railings with a stick or play a record with your finger. And thank you. Thank you. How do you enrich the environment? Not my environment, but an animal's environment, an animal kept in captivity. Now, whatever your views on zoos, it is important sometimes to keep an animal in captivity, say for a breeding program or to nurse an animal back to health. I want you to meet a spectacular animal called Mary. She's an Asian otter and she's come here today with her handler, Kate Hodges, from Staffordshire Wildlife Rescue. 
Now, Mary here, if she was kept in captivity every day... Oh, you're very friendly. <laughs> what do you mean, yum, 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 yum? If you were kept in, she was kept in captivity every day, she'd probably get quite bored with being fed at the same time every day. Now, you could try feeding her by hiding the food in different parts of the pen, but in a relatively small pen, a smart animal like an otter like this would work out where the food was going to be and get bored with that. So the answer is a food ball. This is a food ball, and Kate is teaching Mary how to use it. In here is some food and some pennies, because I know she actually <laughs> likes pennies. And, and the inside of this ball is rather like a maze. In order to get the food out, Mary has to learn to push the ball around in a certain set series of moves, and eventually some food will drop out. Now, that sounds fairly straightforward, but you need to see inside the ball to understand how it works. And if you never get to see inside the ball, you have to try every which way of pushing the ball till you get the food out. And this takes all day. And that's exactly how it is in the wild. Animals spend most of their day in the wild looking for food. And so Mary's environment has been enriched by a food ball. But it doesn't just work for small mammals. Food balls work for larger mammals. And the larger the mammal, the larger the food ball. And this food ball is absolutely enormous. Big enough for a pig to push around. Now then, if I push this one around, I should be able to get some food out. There, look, I managed to get some pig meal out. Now, if you are a pig, Pushing a food ball around like this is a tremendous second best to rooting around with your snout in the mud, which is what pigs do generally. Now then, how does a food ball work? If you look at this one here, you can see the hole on the underside where the food falls out. But if I take the top off, you can see that inside is a cylinder with the food inside. You can hear that with a hole on the top side. So to get the food out, you first got to turn the food ball that way then turn it that way to get the food out the bottom. Not such a difficult puzzle for you and me, but a tricky enough puzzle to enrich the environment of many animals. That's how. How can you avoid going to hell in China? You see, the Chinese are no different to us, really. When they die, they would far rather go up there and play their harps all day than they would go down there where I'm told it's pretty hot and where you get chased around all day by a chap in a red suit who prods you up the bottom with <gasps> his trident. Terrible. That's natural, isn't it? The problem for the Chinese, though, is that they believe it's not sufficient just to have led a pure and blameless life in order to get to heaven. Oh, no. They believe when you die, your relatives have got to send money with you. Loads and loads and loads of money. How do they do that then? Well, it's difficult, isn't it? You see, the, the postal service to hell is not very good. <laughs> they won't take plastic, they won't take credit. So they believe when your relations die, you've got to burn money for the spirits. I mean, my Uncle Bertie's just died. Decent sort of fella. So I reckon $5,000 million what? ought to be enough. 5,000 million American dollars? Chinese dollars. Fridge. But, I mean, it should be enough to get Bertie. That's heaven. a lot of the money. The spirit should be pleased Fred. with that. But just to be on the safe side, let's just whack off another 500 for Uncle Bert as well. Uh, there you are, Bertie. Have a lovely time. But you're not wealthy. You haven't got money to burn. Ah, you see, the Chinese, being the inscrutable fellas they are, they realise the spirits were actually a little bit stupid. And therefore, if they burned fake money and sent that with their relatives, well, the spirits would never know the difference. It looks like real money. But it isn't. It is, in fact, hell money. It's written on the bottom there, hell bank money. So even today, it's a kind of symbolic thing. When someone dies, they send hell bank money with them to make sure they go to heaven. And that's how you avoid going to hell in China. Don't try that one at home unless you've got loads of money. But here is a how that you can try at home. How can you shrink your arms? You can't shrink, shrink your, arms. your arms. You can shrink your arms. No, and if, you you, if you've got arms like a gorilla like me, this is a great how to do. Right, what you need mm. is a wall. Stand in front of the wall, the right distance away, so that your fingertips are just touching the wall like that. Now, and then rotate your arm, one of them, down and around behind your head like this. We'll bring it out this side. Yeah. And look what's happened. 
Oh, it's a you cheated. Me up. You've just pulled your I've arm I've not back cheated. Or Carol, you have a go. If you don't you believe me, have a go yourself. I don't believe you that. You just watch. Well, you see, fingers like that. Round it goes. <laughs> Look at that. That's a big gap. It does appear to have worked on Come you. Come on, Fred, your turn. <laughs> but it won't no. work on me, you see, because I'm a finely honed and well muscled athlete. Okay, you ready, yeah, guys? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> I don't believe so it. It work works. Well, the reason why it works is that when you rotate your arm like this, the muscles in your arm, as they go behind your head, contract, and it actually makes your arm seem shorter. That's how. Hey, Toppy, yeah. yeah. How do you get it back? How do you get out? Um, well, actually, I haven't found a way of stretching that arm. But if you rotate the other arm, yeah. it will shorten that <laughs> arm as well. At least your arms will be the same length. <laughs> That's how. <laughs> hey, that's a great how that is, Toppy. <laughs> <laughs> now, how did a horse become the very first movie star? Well, just over 100 years ago, horse racing was extremely popular, and the raging debate or question of the day was to how a horse managed to gallop. The question was, when a horse gallops, does it have one, two, three or four legs off the ground at any one time? Well, in fact, they travel so fast, it's, in, it's impossible to know, surely. Well, it is. And people were so interested in the answer, there was a reward or prize of 25,000 American dollars for the person who managed to get concrete evidence. Now, you see, today, all we'd do is we'd take a bit of video or a movie and then freeze a frame and there would be your answer, wouldn't mm, it? Yeah, right. mm -hmm. yeah. Well, of course, the problem was, over 100 years ago, this was the only type of camera available. This is a Victorian camera. And the way it worked would would be that they'd put a photographic plate at the back and then they'd take the lens cap off to take a photograph, let the light in through to the plate and then put the cap back on again. Well, that was fine for a posed photograph. If we could have a top family portrait, keep very, very still, I take the lens cap off, the light goes through, put the cap back on again, develop the plate and this is the type of photograph you would have. <laughs> How attractive. Yes, yeah, very nicely posed, exactly. Toppy, I must say. Exactly. But we're talking about horses. Horses have movement. If you were to take a bit of action photography with this camera, disaster. Can we have a little bit of action, please? How about juggling? That constitutes action, yes? Mm -hmm. yeah. Hup, hoo, ha, OK, ha, take ha, the lens ha. cap off, hey, oh, put ha. it back on again, and this is the image, the type of image you'd get. Dreadful. How did they solve the problem, then? Well, it was an English photographer called Mybridge who solved the problem, and he created the very first photographic shutter. And what he did was then he pressed the button, that would happen. Saw the flash of light being able to go mm. through the lens there. This is how it worked. When the camera was in the off position, it was just like that. The lens would be covered. When he released the shutter, this would come down to allow a flash of light through to the plate, and then it would close again. Mm -hmm. So he would effectively freeze a frame. Uh, but back to basics, how did that make a horse famous? Well, he managed to win the prize because this is the photograph he got. This is a horse galloping. There we can see all four legs are off the ground at any one time. But what about the how? How did that make a horse a movie star? Well, I'd uh, like to enlist your help to give you the answer to that. So if you'd like to come this way. I don't like the sound of this. Well, nowadays, to take a movie, what you'd have is one camera, a movie camera, which would take a series of photographs or frames in quick succession to give you the movie. But what Mybridge did was he had lots of cameras, each taking one photograph. And each one would be triggered by a tripwire. Now, we've set up exactly what Mybridge did here on the How To Racing course. These are the cameras. The tripwires would be triggered as the horse goes through, thus giving us a movie. Now, to run the course, we have the How To Pedigree Race Horse, Desert Dyne Top. We're not talking about this. I'm going to say that. Desert Dyne Top. And are you ready? Are you ready? Next and up, they're off. Two, three. Oh, and they're off. Go ahead. Hey. Oh, 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 Whoa. Whoa. And what Mybridge had created, although he didn't realise it, by putting the series of photographs together, he had the very first movie. 
So that is how a horse became the very first movie star, and that is... How the Now! Why do I always have to be the back? <laughs> Why are you never in the thing? <laughs> <laughs> to blame.